Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do a drawing of Johnny Depp as Captain Jack Sparrow. He has a very funny look of amazement in this one. And I'm going to use graphite pencils for this drawing. Uh, I will use a few other tricks, so if you want to find out how I did it, keep watching. Let's get to it. I'm going to use Faber-Castell graphite pencils, but I'm going to use two types, the regular uh, 9000 series graphite pencils and the matte graphite pencils. These are a little bit darker. But I have another trick uh, that I'm going to use. Uh, the paper I'm working on has been primed with clear gesso. Clear gesso is something that people use normally when they paint, but here it will produce a rough textured surface that will create some interesting effects and that will make my graphite pencils a little bit darker and a bit easier to blend. It will also produce some interesting textures. But there are disadvantages as well and I'll get to that a little bit later. Anyway, as you can see I had a sketch already in place and my suggestion is if you're going to work with this surface first do the sketch and then apply the clear gesso because if you try to do the sketch on top of clear gesso um, that's going to be a little bit messy because the material smudges and it can be difficult to erase completely if you want to correct the mistakes. Um, blending on this surface is uh, pretty easy because the rough surface grinds on the material and produces a lot of residue that you can move around. So graphite is very blendable even on regular paper but on this surface it's uh, even easier to smudge it and blend it and that's something to keep in mind. I started with the background first and as for the background here from what I could tell it's um, the scene takes place uh, in a town in front of an inn or something. I don't really remember uh, which movie it is from exactly. But we have a couple of these posts and uh, beams just behind his head. And the thing is that the background is slightly out of focus. So I'm going to try to draw it or shade it in such a way so that it looks out of focus, so that the main subject is more detailed and that the edges are cleaner and clearer on the main subject and that uh, the edges and the shapes or rather the suggestions of shapes in the background are a little bit more blurry and a bit less defined. What I do need to focus on are these relationships between lighter and darker areas just so that uh, some of those shapes would be discernible so that uh, the, uh, the viewer could get some kind of an idea about uh, the objects behind, uh, behind uh, the main subject. And for the shading of the background I largely used the regular graphite pencils but for some of the darker areas I used a touch of these um, matte graphite pencils. So let me say a few words about the pencils themselves. You have the regular graphite pencils. Here I'm using Faber-Castell 9000, 9000 series. Those are very good graphite pencils. And these Faber-Castell matte graphite pencils, their full name is Pit Graphite Matte pencils. Uh, they're very similar except for the fact that they don't have graphite shine. Now I have to tell you something on this surface, clear gesso, um, there is no graphite shine unless you really burnish the surface either by using the blending tools and using too much pressure or by applying too much of, gra of the graphite pencil in one place but in general because the surface is so rough and matte even when you apply regular graphite pencils there will be no graphite shine that's one of the reasons why I like this surface I mean you can do this on regular paper but I just like some of the effects of the, of the rough textured surface created by clear gesso. And um, the reason why I'm using the matte graphite pencils in addition to the 
regular graphite pencils is because they're simply a little bit darker. I have a greater range and some of these ones like 12B and 14B which I'm going to use for the darkest bits they're really dark and they're pretty much like charcoal especially on this surface so you know I'm going to be able to create quite a nice range of value and I'm going to be able to create some really nice contrasts with some really dark areas and speaking of which I am starting to shade the right side of his hat and you can see a clear contrast between the left side and the right side because you can tell that the light source is coming from the left the left side is the light side the right side is clearly the shadow side which is why it's going to be all in the shadow or mostly in the shadow and you can see how much darker it will be for the most part I used these matte graphite pencils and mostly a 12B and a touch of 14 bees for some of the darkest bits you can barely tell the difference but it, as you can tell it's pretty dark and you know I don't want to blend all of it all together um, but I just uh, want to leave some areas a little bit unblended so that there is a little bit of texture like maybe some suggestions of details rough surface and things like that I also added this uh, X on the side of the hat here and I dabbed on this shadow area of the hat to make some parts of it a little bit lighter just to have a little bit more variation now let's say a few words about erasing on this surface because there are disadvantages to this surface and one of the main ones of course is erasing uh, it can be a little bit difficult to get clean shapes with erasers because this surface and just uh, causes a lot of smudging so it's really good for blending and for darker matte areas but uh, unless you've already reserved the white space and worked around it it can be really difficult to erase very nice clean shapes of very light value so that's a problem here and uh, sometimes you can do a little bit of work with an eraser but sometimes uh, you can use some other tricks for example here I will also use a touch of white charcoal for some of the lighter bits and uh, in addition to the <coughs> eraser that will give me some of these touches of lighter value some of these details of lighter value that would otherwise be kind of difficult to achieve and the reason why it will work is because this surface is rough and it takes multiple layers so it's easy to work even with lighter pencil, pencils on top of the darker ones if you're working in colored pencil but here I'm working in graphite mostly and 99.9% .9 of it is going to be done in graphite but there will be a few touches of lighter value where erasers will simply not do and I will have to use some other tools and I'll get to that as well so I'm doing a little bit more refining on the background a little bit more blending and uh, here I want to have I want to have a few of these flyaway hairs and because these hairs are facing the light source they're going to be a little bit lighter so I tried pulling them with an eraser but I wasn't getting really clean marks I normally use either a kneaded eraser or a Tombow Mono Zero eraser or Kohino pencil eraser but I didn't really like how it looked so I added a touch of uh, white pencil white charcoal pencil to get some of these uh, lighter hairs and I think they stand out nicely against that darker background so uh, I've pretty much achieved what I wanted without having to rely only on erasers now I'm gonna keep working on the rest of the main subject because the the left side and the top of the background is mostly done and the reason why I work in that order is of course to minimize smudging because I work from left to right and from top to bottom because I'm right-handed and it's just easier for me that way to minimize the smudging starting to work on the facial features I'm drawing the left eye the, the one on our left 
And here I need to be a little bit more careful. I started out with some pretty dark pencils, like a 12B and a 14B, uh, for the pupils, some of the eyelashes and some of the areas around the eye, which are pretty dark. And he's wearing some kind of a mascara or something. And um, one of the things where I needed a little bit more precision was the was the uh, a reflection or the catch light in the eye itself because I had to reserve that small piece of white space because if I work over it or, or go over, over on top of it with graphite pencil it'll be very difficult for me to erase such a small shape that needs to be very light, very bright so it's better to reserve the white space and make it white or as white as possible if you can avoid avoid uh, working on top of it or um, smudging it. Now there are a bunch of braids here because he has a very complex uh, hairstyle and um, lots of beads and other other small things on his hair like chains, bands, feathers, whatever those are lots of details and I will have to simplify some of them because I can't really interpret every single detail in my reference and I can't really be bothered to try to include every single detail that I see in the reference anyway moving on to the other eye and uh, you can see by the way that I'm drawing the iris and the, the the shape of the eye that I'm really trying to suggest to, to the viewer like his eyes are wide open like he's uh, either surprised or amazed by something it's a very funny look of uh, amazement or bewilderment on his face but then, then again he often looks like that because um, he portrays a character that is often drunk <laughs> so um, now on to the mustache and um, just lightly shading the light side of the face and establishing some contrast between that lighter side of the face and the lightest part of the nose that uh, area of the nose which is facing the light source and which is going to be a lot lighter than the rest of the nose and the face so there are a few very light areas on the face there are there is a lot of nice contrast both on the face and on the head and other parts of the body and his clothes but there's also lots of details and like i said it'll be kind of difficult for me to capture all of that so some simplification will be needed now i'm drawing the beard here and I started a little bit low, as you can tell now the face looks a little bit elongated, but that's because um, the, the hair is a little bit uh, lighter and a bit less dense as you move up towards the cheeks. So I want to take it easy and draw the shadow areas, the darker areas first, and then I can build up the volume and the density of that hair or that beard a little bit later as I uh, move up and shade the rest of the face. The right side of the face, as you can tell, of course, is darker because it's in the shadow. And I also needed to put a sufficient amount of value around the eyes, not just the eyelashes and the general outline of the eye, but also around the eyes and the eyelids because he is wearing some kind of a mascara or some, something weird like that. And um, that makes his eyes look kind of bigger. Anyway, moving on to the left side of the body, where there is, uh, you know, a lot of hair. He has long braided hair with all kinds of things in it. And uh, in, in order to simplify this for myself, I sort of decided to start putting in the darkest areas, the shadow areas first and I often like to do that in my drawings because that really helps me navigate through, through the drawing when I know uh, those uh, darkest bits are already defined and those larger contrasts are already established so that way you can always just focus on the smaller details afterwards 
And the complex uh, sheep or a group of sheep that I'm drawing here, I think that's the buckle of uh, one of his belts that goes across the chest. And uh, some parts of it will have to be a little bit darker and others will be a little bit lighter because it's metallic and it's supposed to be reflecting a little bit of light. Anyway, another thing that I'll have to do is shade this surface in such a manner so that it looks like leather. So leaving a little bit of texture but at the same time making some parts of it smooth enough so that it looks like it's reflecting a bit of light from the light source. Um, I'm just going to keep uh, working on the hair here but at the same time simplifying the details as much as possible while trying to capture the general idea. That's not as easy as it looks because when you simplify things, when you work a little bit more quickly, if it turns out well, people will always say how you made it look easy, but it's not really easy because um, simplification is a very demanding process for, a, for an artist, especially one that is accustomed to drawing more detailed drawings with a higher reference, higher quality reference photo. This reference is of medium quality, but I can still make out a lot of details and I want to push myself to create a drawing that is as detailed as I can make it based on the, on the reference that I have. And the reference will be in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, the reason why I picked this uh, the um, reference in the first place was because I just liked some of the contrasts and I liked his uh, weird look of amazement. He's also carrying a gun or a revolver, whatever it is, um, here in the lower left corner of the drawing. And after that is done, I'm going to be shading around this buckle, making everything look three-dimensional, and then uh, shading the rest of the shirt. And in terms of the blending tools, brushes work well. I also use tutilians, homemade tutilians. They all produce different effects, but you know, if I want to shade an area lightly, I just use a brush to spread the graphite onto that area. And I can do that instead of using a pencil if I want an area of lighter value. And if it doesn't need to have too much texture either. So it's a very quick and easy way of shading um, lighter, areas, lighter areas, I suppose. Moving on to the right side of the hair here, here, where we have some more of these beads and trinkets. And I am simplifying it because I can't really draw every single one. I mean, if I were working in a slightly different medium, like for example color pencils on sandpaper I could really get into smaller details there but then again maybe I would need a higher res reference photo I think this will be fine as it is and you can see here I'm moving on to the right side of the background and again doing a lot of blending because the background needs to have less texture it needs to be more thoroughly blended because it's out of focus, it's a blurry, bulky background with a few more of these suggestions of shapes there like the, these posts and uh, stuff like that. Now moving on to drawing a little bit more of the clothes here drawing the buttons on the jacket, working around them with a tutilian and a pencil, shading around them and then adding some detail and value to the buttons themselves. There are some very fine details, small details here. Um, this uh, rough surface can make it difficult for you to draw some of these finer, smaller lines and details, but then again it's uh, so good if you want to simplify things and uh, establish larger contrasts. Um, I feel like graphite pencils on regular paper 
better when you want to do more detailed drawings then uh, are supposed to have a cleaner look with more precision but when you don't mind the messiness and you, when you want just stronger values and uh, more contrast then you can prime it with clear gesso I've already done quite a number of drawings with graphite pencil on clear gesso and I think they all turned out pretty well and this I think is the most, uh, the most detailed one so far so it can work uh, the more detailed drawings can work on this rough surface even though that would not be my first cho choice if I want to really focus on the details but I will try to make most of it as you can see I'm doing the rest of the jacket here and drawing some details there but also adding some uh, small um, irregularities in the surface of that jacket trying to give it a little bit of texture and then on to some more of these longer braids and the feathers and bands on them this is all a little bit complicated when you look at the reference so the way to simplify it as usual is to focus on the darkest areas first establish those put those in and then it's a little bit easier to work on whatever it is left in between and these braids have a very rough texture uh, or a very I don't know complex looking texture like a, a bunch of small hairs and uh, it's uh, it can be difficult to produce that texture if you if you're trying to draw every single hair but if you just drag your pencil and allow it to create a rough texture in combination with the surface then you can make things easier that's what I call allowing the pencil to work for you now this one has um, like a, a lot of these small bands or um, whatever it is and uh, here I'm going to have to work a little bit slower to draw these smaller details but uh, I am simplifying especially the lower part of the drawing because I'm kind of hoping that most of the focus will go to the face and the eyes and the hat and there is of course a very nice amount of contrast between the hat and the head and the background but the clothes I still need to do some of the details there like these folds on the on the sleeves and around the shoulders and again I'm gonna try to pull a few lighter details with a white pencil with a charcoal pencil because some of these will be difficult for me to do with an eraser and um, because I still have a lot of blending to do maybe I'm gonna do a little bit more of that at the end once I put um, once I'm done with everything and I start putting down the finishing touches right now I'm just trying to you know navigate through all of these braids and whatnot I think uh, what makes it a little bit difficult to erase on this surface is the fact that um, the at least a little bit of graphite always gets buried or stuck in between those um, particles of sanded paper because that's what clear gesso essentially is it creates a surface that's similar to sanded paper just a little bit more rough than some of the artist quality sanded papers and um, that's why it's so easy to create rough looking textures and illusion of detail but it's a little bit more difficult to erase and draw with precision anyway the drawing is almost finished I'm just putting down some finishing touches with a charcoal pencil for some of those lighter areas which I uh, wasn't able to put in earlier 
I hope you liked the drawing. Don't forget to comment and give me a like and check out my other videos. And if you want to see longer videos and a lot more content, you should check out my Patreon. I'm just uh, going to do a little bit more shading here on the right side of the face. And I think it's done now. Thanks for watching and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye bye.